Welcome, Pirate fans, to another edition of Pirate Classic pregame uh, with head coach Steve Mushagian. And today we have a special guest, uh, defensive coordinator Michael Hayden. How's it going, coaches? Going, going great. great. Going great. Always, always feel good to talk about that team. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to break down the SoCal semifinal in 2018 at College of the Canyons. Uh, fifth time in, since 2012, we were in the state playoffs. We're in the semifinals. What's kind of tough is, uh, once again, we're playing a team that we already played. Uh, lost to them earlier in the year at, at Canyons. We're going back to Canyons. Uh, a lot of things going on. Uh, Coach Roos, like I said, it's the fifth time that you've brought a team into the state playoffs. Uh, but we are 0-4 going into this game. What, you know, that's probably number one. What's preparation? Is that in the back of your head? Like, we haven't won at this game yet. Do we prepare different? You know, what was going on that week with, with you and the coaching staff? Well, I think more so than anything, the great John Wooden once said, the experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. So uh, being 0-4, I tried to draw on the experience and I went back to and, and really studied hard our 2012 season before, you know, only co really only uh, Bo coach Bobby and coach Terry Morris were the only ones that were around then. So people really didn't know what I was talking about except for them. But what had happened is that we had beaten them in the regular season and turned around and hosted them and played them. And I knew, now this is going to sound crazy. I knew from the minute that, uh, I saw the College of the Canyons put pictures of their players, their former players on their tickets. That's exactly what Will Cowan did for us in the Bakersfield game. So I knew that that was the jinx number one. But really, as you, as you looked at it, I thought about it and I said to myself, what are our strengths and weaknesses? You know, we're going there. We've got everything to gain. They've got everything to lose, being number one and being undefeated. And they were full of themselves. I could tell by how they celebrated after they beat Bakersfield to be undefeated. And I felt that I knew exactly what that felt like, you know, flicking back six years earlier. So I thought to myself, what do we do best? And I remember going in, Mike and I would meet every Tuesday. Um, I'd go sit down and, and uh, so I told him what, what my plan was talking with, with uh, coach fish and the offensive coaches was, we're going to get behind our strength. Our strength is our offensive line and our strength is running the football. We had Thomas Duckett. Our receivers were just starting to get healthy. We were getting Dom Benson and Brandon Jordan back. So we knew we, if we ran the ball well, we could uh, get some one-on-one -on -one matchups, which played out later in the game. But the other part of it we knew that we had to play well on special teams. We had to try to get something done in special teams and, and we were able to get a block punt. But primarily when I went in, I felt really good with what I was thinking when I went in and visited with Mike and he showed me what they were going to do defensively. And as an offensive, you know, a former offensive coach, I knew that it was going to cause them problems and they were not going to be ready for this. And that, uh, and it just, it played out, you know, the whole first half played out almost to a T with how we could have asked. And, other than one of our special teams blunders in the second half led them to gave them some field position uh, for that, that last three points. But Mike, um, I remember Mike showing me some things they were going to do coverage wise. And then one of the things that I was most excited about was putting Trenton Carlson in a position to rush one of their big inexperienced tackles who's now at Auburn, may I say so. I mean, but he was, he was, a, a, you know, learning how to play football still great size kid, but I knew, I knew Trennan, we both knew that Trennan had that uh, advantage with that quick first step, but I won't go over all, I'll let, uh, I'll kind of steer it over to Mike and let him, let him talk about that, uh, about that moment. Cause that's when I felt felt really good. And then I just gave the kids history lesson after history lesson the rest of the week. And we just made them believe the whole time. And the minute we lost to them the first time, I even, when I was shaking their hands, I told them, see you in three weeks. I said that as cocky as that may sound or arrogant as that may sound, I actually felt they were going to run the table. We were going to finish our job and then uh, get a chance to match up with them. But Mike, Mike and, and Terry and Lonnie and, and Terrence, they did, 
we had such a great game plan. It made it, and the kids, Kale Jackson, Donnie Dixon, Trini, Trenton Carlson, I mean, Brad Taylor, they just, and amongst others, they just played their butts off. So, so Mike, we're, we're talking about defense is going to be the key. Uh, we had a tough loss there uh, early in your three weeks beforehand. Uh, let's, let's break down what the game plan was and what was going through your head as the defensive coordinator. Yeah, so, you know, kind of starting first, uh, when we went to Canyons the first time, you know, like we talked about throughout the entire year of 2018, we were still trying to develop an identity, you know, and I think that's something where even as you get into week five, six, seven, sometimes you're still finding out what that is. Um, and when we went to Canyons the first time, you know, we really kind of learned who we were through that loss. Um as bad as we played, there was a lot of opportunities that we left on the field to make that, that game pretty darn close. Um, but what we did is we were able to look at ourselves and, and we said, how do we get faster and how do we, how do we give ourselves an opportunity to be extremely multiple without being one dimensional? And I know that kind of sounds like, wait, what? But, you know, we wanted to be able to, um, show a variety of different coverages without having to do too much as far as alignments go. Um, and we wanted to be able to drop different people in different places without having to switch personnel. So it's that complexity within that simplicity. And uh, we looked at, at what we had and, and we came up with a, a D line package where we could put basically four defensive ends on the line of scrimmage, uh, create pressure with four and allow us to be extremely multiple on the back end. Um, and, and so we really learned what we were and what we were about. And as we started to install it, we started to build and we started to hit our stride against Canyons. And we knew that. Um, so it was, again, it was getting pressure with four through a variety of different, just two man, three man X games up front and then keeping a quarterback on his toes. And, and then ultimately, you know, going into that week, we preached to our guys throughout the entire time is, in the first game against Canyons, that quarterback had nothing at his toes, right? He was able to sit in that pocket. He had that time. And any quarterback, if, if they have that type of time in today's game, they're going to pick you apart, and that's what he did. So our whole objective was even if we're not getting sacks, we got to get people on his toes. we got to make them feel that pressure and get them moving backwards. And you can see that throughout the game. And then, you know, once that confidence came, it just, it snowballed and, and, and guys built off of it. And like Coach Moose said, you know, he started listing off all those names. I mean, you talk about being in a playoff situation, you always want your, your best players to play the best. And that's what they did, you know, across the board. Our best players played better than their best players on the, on the defensive side of the ball. So, the, you know, the defensive plan – we got it. We're ready to go offensively. We're going to, we're going to run the ball. You know, that game we ran for 191 yards on the ground. We only passed for 77. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the whole game, you know, the defense kind of was our offense. It sounds like uh, how it worked out. Well, we tried to not, you know, the first time we went down there, we turned the ball over uh, six or seven times and a lot of them were going in the red zone. In fact, if you were a pro team in Vegas, you would have thought that they were, uh, you know, throwing the game because we uh, we threw a couple interceptions to nobody. So we wanted to, for a lack of a better term, take the ball out of, our, you know, take the decision making out of the players hands and let the coaches kind of control it. So we were able to run the football. We got a couple one on one matchups, you know, with Brandon Jordan, and we knew he was great with 50 50 ball. So we were able to make some progress there. And then we were solid that day. We were as solid as can be in all phases of, uh, of the kicking game. And we got the lead. We played a little conservative offensively, but that was by design. Um, I told Mike and I told Terry, I remember going and saying, we're going to run the football. You know, we're going to get, we're going to have, you know, I thought we'd have, you know, 250 yards rushing, but on the other hand, we got some turnovers, so we had short fields to for our scoring drives. And so that kind of uh, did it. And I mean, Thomas Duckett had 137 yards rushing, and then he got hurt, actually, in the game and had to come out. And in our last drive, uh, Gil Scott Jackson came in uh, from Oaks Christian, and 
he put the game away like he was the freaking closer. You know, he was like coming out of the Dodgers bullpen, uh, like like the World Series just said. He put the game away and was smart enough. He broke one long run and he was smart enough just to go down and sacrifice probably maybe a touchdown and to, you know, run the clock down more and then we were able to run it out. But, uh, you know, that was, uh, I, I wore the same sweatshirt, so I had to wear it today too because that was, the, that was, uh, Good luck, the good luck sweatshirt for that that day. And I, I that game just, you know, I know Trennan was the defensive MVP and Thomas Duckett was the offensive MVP. I remember that and remember getting Gatorade and, and uh, you know, it, it was a huge monkey off our backs too, not just for me, but for the program. And I, I, I don't know if I've ever been any more excited than I was after that that game. Maybe, maybe the next week, but. <laughs> <laughs> So, so let's talk about probably the last minute, right? We're up eight points. Sounds like we got the ball. Gil Scott's like, what's going through your head? You know, all, uh, Mike, same with well, as, as coaches. Like, it, it, you see it. It's happening. We're, we're going to win this game. We're going to move on for the first time in school history. You know, uh, the season now continues, right? We started off this season uh, with Brennan Daly as, as part of, you know, part of our, our identity, right? Young, you know, trying to figure things out. Now you're at this point, like, we're, we're one step closer to that main goal. What's going through your guys' heads as the clock's ticking down? <laughs> Run the ball, don't turn it over. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we felt like Brendan was with us. That's really when uh, the playing for more um, kicked in. It was almost as if, uh, you know, he, he said, all right, I'm going to give you guys a little boot right now. And, and that would have been the kind of game and, and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but if Brennan could have scripted that game, that would have been the way he would have loved the game to be. Run the football, you know, keep the defense off the field, and then play relentless on, on, on the defense and special teams. And we did. I can just see the guys making plays after plays and seeing how frustrated the Canyons receivers were getting. And then they dropped a couple balls that were coming at them just because we were in the area. They didn't know we were mixing coverages up, playing man, and then dropping somebody in the zone. And their, their head was on a swivel. I just, you know, the kids tell me, Don't, coach, we can't wear those gray, uh, gray jerseys. You, you wore the wrong jerseys the first time we were there. So we took every bit of superstition we could with, uh, with this one. I think I pulled my gray hat out for the first time too. So it, <laughs> It's it was one of those games where hey we, what do you got to lose and I know on I know the coaches the defensive coaches they, they kept looking down at me and said don't throw the ball on third and three <laughs> and that's when Gil Scott made that I think he made that big run and we and then the chains moved and he, and he stayed in bounds too yeah. and he he made a great he did a great job of keeping that clock going. Yeah, when those chains moved and that and we saw the you know that going <laughs> we're, we're just. All of a sudden, our sideline, I don't know exactly, maybe the last 20 seconds was as, was as much fun as you could ask for. And, uh, you know, it just, I just, I just remember everybody was just like, we did it. We did it. We finally did it. Mike, so your, your game plan, counting down those seconds, you know, how's that make you feel as defensive coordinator? Like, hey, you put this scheme in and it, and it worked to a T. How's, how's that going as, as, as the clock's running out in your head? Uh, you know, it's a little bit different. Um, and you know, as a, as a former coach, when you have those high intensity games, um, for me, it was more just a sense of relief, but, uh, pure exhaustion at the same time, you know, like you're so focused and you're so in every single moment, you know, we talked a lot. We always, as a defense, we talk about going into a game. It's like a prize fight for boxing. You know, you're going to get hit. You're going to lose a round here or there, but it's like you got to keep coming forward. And, you know, you keep coming forward, you keep coming forward. And then when you get to the end, you almost don't even know what to feel. Like you're just so exhausted because mentally, physically, emotionally, you put everything into that. Um, so it was more like just like a kind of a sigh of relief. Um I don't think it really kicked in for me until the next day, you know, like once we got off the bus and, you know, we get into the office on Sunday to watch that game, that's when it finally kind of hit me. And it was just like, man, 
you go back through, you look at your board and you see all the notes and all the things that you wanted to accomplish and you're putting check marks next to them instead of X's. And, and that's when I think it, that's where I felt the best, you know, and, and you even mentioned it, you know, sometimes our defense led the offense, you know, we had that fumble that we forced that we were able to, to get the ball, you know, within the 10. We had Jalen Watson came up with a pick and a return. You know, we always try and get three times a game. We want to set up the offense in the plus side of the field. And even from that standpoint, you know, it doesn't always feel like as big as it is until you, you get to that next day. So um, regardless, though, it was exciting, man. It was it was exciting, to say the least. Numb is a great, uh, a great word. I think we were, I think we were all really numb. And uh, I do remember Jalen picking that ball off and, and run and having that great return. And I think what happened is every one of the defensive turnovers and when the special teams turnovers, it inspired our offense. It put, you know, it's like, Hey, they got us, they gave us this opportunity. We're going to take advantage. And we took advantage of every opportunity and that's where you get to you know you're going to be a good football team when you take advantage of the opportunities because two evenly matched teams uh you know that was they were probably a little stronger offensively and we, we may have been although their defense was i think was number one one of the top team defenses and so our guys wanted to uh you know wanted to show them hey ventura, ventura is pretty good defensive football team too and I think Mike said, hit it on the nail. We really didn't know who we were on both sides of the ball. And we kind of just kept, it was kind of like playing chess. You kind of kept making moves. And then finally we made that right. We said, okay, we're going to put him here. We're going to put him here. We're going to do this and do that. And finally it worked out and it caused the whole team in all three phases to click and play together. And then we felt good until we opened looked at the paper and said, oh yeah, Hey, we're playing Riverside. They just beat El Camino 63 to 24. We got another number one team uh, coming up. But I remember the biggest thing, and Mike, you remember this too, is we said, we want to practice on Thanksgiving. That was just mm -hmm. something that we kept saying, we want to practice on Thanksgiving Day. Well, that well, was going to be my follow-up. Mike, maybe you could think about having to practice Thanksgiving week, knowing it's going to be possibly with some of the local players because they'll have their Thanksgiving at home. How was that planning then? And we could talk more next week about, but just right now, knowing you're playing Thanksgiving weekend, like how's that planning? Uh, so in all honesty, it's, it's every football player and football coach's dream. I mean, it, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where if, if you've been involved in football, you know, I grew up in Detroit. So for me, it was always about the lions on Thanksgiving, you know, like that was Thanksgiving. It was football. Um, so to us, we were excited about the planning more than anything, you know, like the fact that we put ourselves in that position. And I wanted to just backtrack real quick, too, because Coach Moose, I, I think the other thing that needs to be talked about was the fact that before the 2018 season, we sat down as a staff and you talked us through about how we needed to change our mindset when it came to practice and training to get our guys ready to play for those playoff games. You know, too many times we were getting a little bit more burned out and a little bit more banged up. And, and, and we approached the season, you know, differently as far as practice planning going and when we were in pads, because we wanted to prepare those guys. If we want to play those games, we have to, we have to train to play those games. And I think that was the other thing too, is when we got to that game, that was probably the healthiest that we had been all season. You know, we, we, we were a hundred percent healthy going into the playoffs, which not a lot of teams can say either. Um, so that was just something I wanted to make sure I gave you credit for that because that was something that was, it, it really did. Like it, it affected us. It was a, a short term, you know, vision that turned into a long-term success. So I do, rem um, I do remember, I appreciate yeah. that. I do remember, coming in what's our situation of the week we practiced all during training camp we had every mm -hmm. little possible thing and then we continued to do that you know on Tuesdays and Wednesdays uh, throughout the week and you know we've always preached the games they remember are played in November and so that was uh, that was just we had I took the commercial from I don't know if it was Lexus or Mercedes the November to 
the November to remember, because that re it really was a November to remember. That that was a special, it's a special group because they weren't as that wasn't our most talented football team. We had maybe 2017 might have had more talent, and then some guys from 2006 between 16 and 17, I think, athletically may have been two of our most talented football teams, but 18 had the best chemistry. And sometimes that just goes to show you that uh, sometimes that uh, that pays the makes is the difference maker in that. Well, let's fast forward now to this weekend. Another big weekend, uh, not only at the college level with all our, all our alumni playing, but in the NFL, it looks like Jake Luton's going to get his second start. Uh, his first start was for a rookie coming out. I, I think it was pretty good for him. <laughs> he almost he almost pulled it off for him. You know, I, I, and I said that to the, uh, I was talking to the Jacksonville beat writer and we were talking about how uh, you think of the rookie quarterbacks, you've got Jake Luton and Hebert and Joe Burrow and Tua and how none of them got a chance to play in a preseason game, like in the past. And, you know, and I, and I thought, well, maybe that's to their advantage that they went in there, you know, white eyed and bushy tailed and didn't know, you know, the magnitude of the situation. But really, I think what's happened is is the coaches have now adapted a little bit more, which we've been doing. As a, that's what we've been trying to do the last. What Mike alluded to earlier, we've tried to do that the last couple of years. Is you got to kind of set your systems up based upon your talent pool and and do the things. You know, it's just because you can you believe that you need to play this front every down, you can't do that. Or this coverage, we want to play man every down. Sometimes you can't. You know, we had Jalen Watson playing corner. You could play a lot more, man. And speaking of him, he had a great he had a great opener for the Pac-12 at Washington State. So we're in number zero <laughs> of all things. So I was I was really proud of of, of Jalen. But going back to Jake, yeah, you've got uh, Jake Luton, you know, from Ventura College, obviously playing against uh, Aaron Rodgers from Butte College, uh, you know, in Lambeau Field without fans. So uh, that kind of uh, it kind of levels thing levels the playing field a little bit, so it'll, you know, Mike, be, it'll be exciting. You know, Mike, we got Jesse leaving there. He he's getting snapped. So how's that feel for you as a defense, the defensive coordinator that had him? You know, how, how's that how's that for you? Yeah, I mean it's 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 exciting and it's exciting for him. You know, um, especially with Jesse. Jesse was a special individual. You know, his life experiences. He's been through some tough times. And the one constant for him has always been football. You know, that was always his one constant. And it's always been his love. So when you get to see your, your former players living out their dream and, uh, you know, see he sent Snapchat's a picture of him and Tom Brady after the game, you know, when they played Tampa or, you know, little things like that. Um, and you just get to see the smile on his face. It, I can't help but but smile like Jesse, here's a prime example. You know, I went back for Christmas to, to visit my mom and my dad. And they always fly out from Michigan every year for a game. They always do. And they always want to meet the players and just say hello. And uh, I went home for Christmas uh, last year and Liberty was playing in their bowl game. And my parents canceled their plans so they could stay home to watch Jesse play. You know, <laughs> like, hey, no, Jesse's on TV. We got to watch him play. And Jesse sent us a message after the game, you know, just thanking us. And that made my mom's day, week, you know, month. She was loving it because, you know, he took the time to do it. And, you know, it just spoke to his character. And now, you know, he gets to go showcase his skills. And, and I, I have a feeling he'll be in the league a few years uh, just based on what he does. And it, it's exciting to watch him. Yeah, we got to get them in there through their next contract so they can make a few fundraising. Uh, <laughs> we have to hit them up, you know, hit them up a little bit for that. But they, uh, I think they're they're both. You know, the funny thing is that both of them. We were talking about selling that one, those one sets of jerseys, and they both were two guys that wanted their number. They take a lot of pride in in their junior college experience. It, you know, it obviously it turned it gave Jake Gluten a second uh, start, but it really with Jesse, it changed his life. You know, I, I think it really changed his life because he went through, like Mike said, he went through an awful lot and he grew up and then he, he realized, 
what his calling was and he did something and he's not the biggest guy he might be six two on a on a windy day you know and <laughs> he's put some pounds on and and worked hard but when he came in I'm telling you he might have been six one and a half maybe 215 220 pounds you would have never there isn't one guy I don't care who it was it was Tyson Butler <laughs> it was Mike none of you guys would have said this guy's going to be in the NFL <laughs> in 2020 even though his brother was because he mm -hmm. looked more like a linebacker or a you know a a big running back than he did a, a defensive lineman playing against 300 pound tackles. Yeah. So yeah. what he's done has really been, really been remarkable. I'm proud of those guys and they both got their degree and that's, that's really special. Mm -hmm. You know, they put their priorities in order and did it the right way. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like what we always talk about. It's not only the wins on the field, it's the wins off the field and uh, the testament to the program that, that you've built and, and the coaches that have come in that, that keep building it up. You know, hopefully uh, we're playing at least in February for a little bit, get a couple games in and, and next fall we're back to normal and, and having Saturday night games and, and hopefully making more classics. <laughs> that, that is true. I'm just hoping for here's I'm, I'm pulling for warp speed operation, warp speed, get that, uh, get that vaccine done. I good news today on it. So I, I think, uh, Things are going to turn the corner. I know the numbers are up a little bit and the panic is still there, but uh, I'm going to keep the faith that uh, we'll be out there. We'll, we'll be playing. I don't know how many games we'll play this spring. We're, we're going to play and then uh, turn around and that year not counting is going to be huge for, for these kids. It's like getting a, a spring practice at the, you know, at the college level and get to play games instead of scrimmages against yourself and it not count. <laughs> and it's the that that you couldn't ask for more. So I'm ex I'm optimistic and excited. Well, we got a big two weeks for Pirate Classics. Uh, Saturday night, six p.m. on the Crown Plaza Ventura Beach VC Sports Network. We're going to be playing the 2018 SoCal semifinals against College of the Canyons. Coach Moose, Coach Hayden, thank you again for coming on. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. I hopefully we'll have the rest of the staff because I think next week's game is a. We might have a long talk. We might have to do it uh, like at five o'clock somewhere, you know, because <laughs> yeah. that, you know, that kind of build up. Was, there's no doubt that game. Everybody had a significant contribution in that in that game. That was that was special. Well, thanks again for coming on, and we'll see you next week. See you next Thank week. You. Thank you.